Today I'm going to explain a trio of very good, pretty easy to grow plants you can use in combination with the Aquaverde Riparian Planter to develop a beautiful planted riparian layout in your aquarium. The best kinds of plants to use in planted riparians are true marginal aquatics. These are plants that are adapted to grow in very wet places, and while they hold their foliage up in the air, they're rooted in the mud under shallow water or in very wet soil. And some of their habitats may include the edges or margins of lakes, streams, ponds, and rivers. In freshwater swamps and marshes, you can also find similar sorts of plants and some of the same kinds of plants. There are a few other specialized sorts of habitats, such as mangrove swamps or acid bogs, where marginal aquatic plants and similar species can also be found growing. Here's a photograph that shows a marginal aquatic plant habitat, the shallow bay of a freshwater lake where typha cattails and other marginal aquatic plants are growing. There are hundreds of species of marginal aquatic plants in nature and quite a few of them that are used in gardening in various ways. You can find some of the best riparian plants for sale as, as pond plants. Uh, not all marginal aquatic plants require wet or muddy soil to grow, and some of them do just fine in average moist garden soil. You can find some of these for sale as annual or perennial garden bedding plants. There are a few house plants that grow well in planted riparians. And lastly, uh, there, are, there are a number of aquarium plants also that will grow well in a, in a riparium if used in their immersed foliage form. Among these are uh, echinodors, sword plants, and various stem plants such as Bacopa or Hydrophila. Today we're going to cover three true marginal aquatic plants that are easy to grow in planter riparians and usually pretty easy to find. You might encounter them at your local garden center, uh, a home improvement center, or even a grocery store. Of course, Japanese sweet flag is sometimes sold as a pond plant. You might also find it for sale as uh, a garden bedding plant. Cyperus dwarf umbrella sedge has similar uses as a pond plant or bedding plant. And Spathophyllum peace lily is usually sold as a house plant. This shot shows most of our planting supplies that we're using today, including the riparian planters, live plants, gravel substrate, and a couple of other items. Spathophyll and peace lilies are very common, really ubiquitous as house plants, and there are dozens of different varieties that vary in, in size and leaf shape. The size and shape of the floral spathe can also vary. Some peace lilies can grow pretty big to three feet or taller. For using as riparian foliage in an average size fish tank, try to select a piece of lily plant that's, that a, that's a foot tall or shorter. This single potted piece of lily plant is actually a clump with a few connected plantlets. And it's rather big to use in the riparian planter as it is, so we're going to divide it. By dividing it, we can also get uh, a somewhat better value for our purchased plant. Uh, with, with a few plants to use in, in more than one planter. So we'll start by uh, removing from the pot and then breaking apart the root ball try, and trying to knock out as much of the, uh, the soil as we can. Try to keep most of the roots intact during this step. As we remove most of the soil, we can see the individual plantlets a little bit more clearly and start to pull them apart. It looks as though we'll have at least three or four plantlets from this single potted piece of lily plant. The bamboo skewer is a handy tool to use for teasing apart the roots and knocking more of the soil out of the root ball. We'll use some clean water to rinse away as much of the remaining soil as we can. The riparian planter is only about four inches deep and 
The plant roots should not curl around inside the planter when we plant, so we'll use the scissors to trim the roots back to a few inches long. Of course, Japanese sweet flag is an excellent riparian plant for recreating a grassy riverbank environment. While it has grass-like foliage, it's not a grass at all, but is in fact in its own unrelated plant group. There are a few different cultivated varieties. This one has uh, lime green, yellow, and dark green pinstripe foliage. A chorus grows in a manner similar to an Anubius plant with a creeping rhizome that grows along over the surface of the soil. This detail is important for, for planting. It looks as though we'll be able to get several divisions out of this single potted plant. We'll start by again knocking it out of the, uh, the pot, breaking apart the root ball, separating as much of the soil from the roots as we can. And as the soil starts to fall away, we can see the different sections of rhizome. And indeed, we'll be able to get several plants from this single potted plant. To divide the rhizome pieces, I like to use a, a sharp razor blade. A little bit easier to use than a scissors for this, for this job. Notice each one of these divisions has a a section of rhizome about an inch long and several several long roots. We'll again rinse away the excess soil from the, the chorus roots to get them ready for planting in the riparian planter. We can use the bamboo skewer again to remove the last pieces of potting soil clinging to the roots. And we'll again trim the roots back to about three inches long. Cyperus dwarf umbrella sedge is another very good grassy riparian plant. There are a few different kinds of Cyperus umbrella sedge in, in cultivation as garden plants. It's important to choose the, the dwarf varieties, and there are three or four different common dwarf varieties of umbrella sedge. The taller Papyrus Cyperus uh, umbrella sedges can get to be six feet tall or taller. This particular variety will grow to uh, 15 to 30 inches tall. It tends to stay more compact in brighter light, so if you use multiple T5 lamps or a bright LED, it'll stay shorter. We can again get several plantlets, plantlets from this single potted plant. Cyperus has really long fibrous roots. Uh, the bamboo skewer is especially handy for, for teasing apart the roots and removing the soil from the root ball. As we carefully divide the plantlets, we see that uh, each division has, has a few long roots. Again, rinse the, uh, rinse the divisions, clean the soil from the, from the roots, and trim them back to a few inches long so that they can fit inside the riparian planter. The Aqua River Riparian Planter uh, uses a special new technology, the tab and slot joint, to build a sturdy planter cup with laser cut acrylic parts. We have an older video that shows the complete assembly of the, of the Riparian Planter. There's the planter ready for the planter screen. We decided to plant a pair of the Pisolo divisions together in one planter to get a fuller plant sooner as they grow in. Begin planting by positioning the plantlets so that the, the crown, the area where the roots and the shoots grow from, is just below the top rim of the planter. 
then fill around the roots with the baked clay aquarium gravel. This is the same kind of substrate that you can use for any kind of uh, regular planted aquarium. Works really well for riparian plants as well. As we complete planting, uh, by lowering the the planter into a into a shallow dish of water, we can rehydrate the plant roots and also cause the gravel substrate to settle in the areas around the roots so that the plant is nice and secure. We'll finish the planting by attaching the pair of heavy duty suction cups, snapping them into place, and then we'll get ready to plant our next plant. The aquarium should be positioned in the planter so that the creeping rhizome will be just on top or about even with the top level of the gravel. And you should also seed it in the back of the planter so that as the plant grows forward, it can root down into the space in the front of the planter. Since the uh, rhizome is sitting on top of the soil and the divisions of the acorus usually have just a few roots, the plant can tend to be kind of top heavy. So in order to secure it better in the planter, we'll wrap a single rubble, rubber band around top to bottom to hold the, the plant in place for a few weeks until it roots into the planter. We again dip the, the planter with plant and planting substrate into a dish of water. And we're again attaching the pair of heavy duty suction cups. I planted the dwarf umbrella sedge in the same way as the peace lily with the plant crown just below the top rim of the riparian planter. Please ex excuse the bad exposure correction of this video clip. This, this shot shows the fish tank, an 11 gallon aquarium with the Japanese sweet flag in the peacefully positioned on the rear glass panel. Notice that the riparian planters are positioned with the top rim just above the water level. Grassy plants like uh, the sweet flag and like the dwarf, dwarf umbrella sedge look best in a planter riparian if repeated in, in several planters. This mimics the way that marginal plants often grow in nature where there is usually a dominant grassy plant with a few other plants mixed in. I decided that I wanted this layout to be a little bit taller. The Japanese sweet flag only grows to about 12, 14 inches tall. So I'm going to replace it instead with uh, the dwarf umbrella sedge. Before positioning any more plants, I'm carefully cleaning the aquarium rear panel, uh, again using the razor blade. It's very important that uh, all of the algae scum, biofilm, hard water deposit is removed. The riparian planter suction cups hold really well. They maintain a strong grip for a long time, but only if that glass is very clean when you position the planter. Our first dwarf umbrella sedge is in in place right next to the right next to the peace lily. We're going to put a uh, dwarf bluebell right next to the dwarf umbrella sedge. A second dwarf umbrella sedge. Again, we're repeating that tall, grassy background plant in a couple of planters to, to form that natural kind of marginal aquatic layout, mimicking a, a natural riverbank or lakeshore environment. Please visit us online, our sister brand, Riparium Supplies, web address, riparianusupply.com, as well as aquaverde.com will both direct to our website and online store. Thank you very much.